Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are taking a look at Chanel eyeliners. So I have quite a few. They recently came back with what has historically been my favorite eyeliner, the Le Crayon. And so I have several of those. I have the Crayon Coles. I also have the Stilo Ombre A Contour, the liquid eyeliners, Le Line and the Stilo Yo Waterproof. So we're gonna take a brief look at all of them, but we're going to focus on the newer ones, the Le Cran Coles and Le Cran Yo. Now the Le Cran Cole, you know, they're, they're not new, they've been here, but they are fairly similar to Le Cran Yo. So let's take a look at those. We're gonna start off with some swatches and you know, packaging on these, they come with their own sharpener, You've got one end with the actual pencil and the other end you have a brush tip. So I picked up, I believe five or six of these. So let's start off. This is 66 Brun Cuivre. And these are a creamy pencil. But I have to say, I've taken a while, you know, testing these for the last several weeks because I feel like, you know, historically, I always loved them because they are so creamy. By the way, that was 66 Spring Cuivre. Right? Now this one here is 58 Berry. But I feel like they are not as creamy as they used to be. So here's Berry. You can see Spring Cuivre, it's brown with a little bit of a copper glint. And then berry, it's really more like brown with a touch of berry. It's not, when I first heard that it was gonna be a berry shade, I was thinking it was gonna have more red in it, but you can see it really, it doesn't. You know, it's not too red, but it's a really nice shade. And it turns out I've been wearing that one a ton. So moving on, we have 71 Black Jade. This has always been one of my favorites. And Here's black jade, so it is going to be kind of like an emerald green with some black undertones to it. Just so you can see like one single line. Uh, let me go ahead and add a single line for each of the other ones, just in case that helps at all. This is 02 Bruntique, that right here next to Bruntquivre. And you can see that this brown here, it actually goes on more creamy in texture than these other three have. The other three feel a little bit drier to me. Could just be this particular pencil. But you can see this is gonna be a pretty neutral medium brown. It doesn't have like the copper glints to it. There's a tiny, tiny bit of sparkle in here, but it's not really evident. You're not going to put it on and notice sparkle, but you're gonna get a little bit of light reflection. And then we have 19 Blue Jean. And you can see this is a really beautiful, kind of like a, a steel blue. I really like this shade. This is one that I wear a lot as well. And we also have 69 Gris Centillon. Let me just shade that in a little bit better. Now, this one has a little bit of shimmer in it as well, just like the Brun Cuivre. So if you look closely at all of these, the Gris and the Brun Cuivre, these two both have some shimmer. There's a very faint, it doesn't look like as much shimmer, but just a little bit in the blue jean. There's also a little bit in the berry shade. The um, Black Jade and the, what was that, the Brantique those do not appear to have any shimmer. So I also picked up two Le Cran Coles. We've got Claire 69. This is the shade that you can use on the rim for eye brightening. Very creamy, very comfortable and easy to use. And we also have 62 Ombre, which is a really beautiful brown shade here. And let me just put a swatch of that right up here so you can see how it compares to the others. And you can see that the tone is going to be a little different. This has a little bit more red in it than these. 
So I'm gonna talk a little bit about this formula while you look at this eye demo. So when you're looking at this demo here, I'm using the shade Berry on my eyes. And I apologize for my technique here, but I had to do this one-handed and couldn't really see very well what I was doing. So um, yeah, it's better if I have two hands. <laughs> but anyway, we've got Barry going on the upper lash line and you can see that it is a smooth, creamy, blendable formula. You can blend this out. However, as I was starting to say before, it doesn't feel as creamy as I remember it feeling in the past. Now, either, you know, newer formulas have come out that have kind of over overshadowed the creaminess of these, or perhaps they're not as creamy as they used to be, but I have to say they are not as creamy as I expected them to be. As I'm putting this on the lower waterline, and by the way, these are recommended for use on the rim of the eye, and they are supposed to, you know, give you like all day wear. So this is, according to Chanel, an ultra long wearing eye crayon that achieves a variety of effects from subtle and defined to bold and dramatic, thanks to an included brush tip, and it can be used on the rim of the eye. So it comes in seven shades, it retails for $32, but as you notice putting berry on the rim, you really, it's adhering to the skin adjacent, but the actual part of the waterline that is wet, that does not, you know, it does not go on. <laughs> so just something to note there. I do have to say adhering to the skin surrounding it, that will last all day, but anything that gets kind of directly on the rim or waterline for me has not been effective with any of the shades and I have tested all of those. However, you can see that I'm also going in with the Le Cran Cole in Claire on the waterline, and that actually goes onto the actual waterline a little bit better. You can see it. It's not gonna stay quite as vibrant there the whole day, but it is still evident at the end of the day when I go to remove it. However, on the other eye, we're taking a look at Ombre from Le Cran Cole, and we're gonna put that on the lid and you can see here that it's smooth, it's creamy, it's actually a little bit creamier in texture than Le Crangue. So it goes on very nicely. And these Le Crangue Coles, they come in four shades, they retail for $32 as well. They do not have the brush tip on the end, they just have the pencil. Again, they will also come with a sharpener. These are meant for a smoky effect. They're soft cold pencils that intensify eyes for a dramatic look, and they're semi-matte. And again, these are intended for use in the rim of the eye as well. So you can see putting it on, it looks pretty similar on the eye until I go in at the end and I add shadow on top. So I am purposely adding shadow on top of the both of these eyeliners. So you can kind of see how the Le Cran Cole actually kind of fades away with the rubbing. And this is after it has sat on my eye for a few minutes, so it should have already set. So this does not kind of remain in place. If you come in contact with it and you smudge it throughout the day, it will move. However, what's odd about this, I've been saying however a lot, uh, what's odd is that it does go on better in the rim of the eye than the Le Crane So it still doesn't go perfectly on the rim of the eye, but I have to say it does a better job than Le Crane and it actually stays better too, which is odd considering how easily it wears away with the brush. <laughs> so I found that to be very interesting. I've tested this for several weeks to see whether this is really accurate, and it is. So essentially my thoughts on these are that they're nice eye crayons, they're nice eye pencils, but they're not as good as I expected or remembered from the previous versions. So I find Le Crayon Yeux to not be as creamy as I expected. It comes in seven shades and I, I like them. They go on nicely. However, I did expect them to be creamier and I expected them to last a little bit better in the waterline than they do. However, on the actual skin, they do last all day and they hold up to any sort of smudging or anything throughout the day. So they work really well from that standpoint. Le Cran Cole, I was, 
I pretty much knew how these would perform. Look around cold, they do smudge out. I did expect these to stay a little bit better. Once you smudge it out, I thought it would set a little bit more strongly. Texturally, uh, I feel like both of these, I expected these to feel more like the Victoria Beckham eye cudgels and they're not as creamy as that. So those are definitely a creamier product. So are the Sisley Fido Coal Stars. Those are both creamier than these Chanel pencils. And I have to say that the eye cudgels from Victoria Beckham, they're probably most similar to Le Cran Cole from Chanel. They both smudge out beautifully. They both kind of stay there. I feel like they'll both kind of smudge throughout the day. The Le Cran Cole from Chanel performs better in the waterline for me than the Victoria Beckham, but the Victoria Beckham will hold up better. Um, you know, it sets a little bit better after you smudge it out than the Chanel. So something interesting to note there. The Le Cran Yeux, you know, I feel like it's a nice kind of in-between product. It's kind of in between the Cielo Ombre A Contour, which is a little bit creamier than these, and the Cielo Yo Waterproof. So let's take a look at those, just so we can kind of compare some shades and formulas as well. Let's start with the Cielo Ombre A Contour. So these, I have, I'll swatch all of the shades I have, but there are only four shades that are permanent. They retail for $34 and you have a sharpener at the end, and it's a retractable product. This one here is a limited edition shade, which is Contour Khaki. And again, they come out with different limited edition shades for these, but they only have four shades that are permanent. You can see this is gonna be a thicker product, but it's incredibly creamy. Creaminess for this is much more similar to the Victoria Beckham in formula wise, however, these will blend out and I feel like they set really well. One of the things though that I have noticed with some of these is when you do kind of buff these out, if you're gonna use it all over the eye, they kind of have this like warm brown base to them. And that's kind of what you see. So like this, let me add a little bit more of this contour khaki here. Um, so we'll put it here. But when you start kind of rubbing this out, on my eyes, so you can see that kind of looks greenish gray, right? On my eyes though, it turns this brown shade. And this isn't the only one. A lot of them do that. And I've heard from several people that have that same experience. This one here is Contour Clair number 12. This is a permanent shade. This is a really, this is a really great neutral brown shade here. So I really like this one. You can see it's a little bit of a mousy brown. It, it's pretty neutral. I would say, even though it has the appearance of looking a little bit cool here with all these other colors, it actually does lean a little bit warm. We have 40 Beige Perlet. This was limited edition last summer. It is my favorite shade by far. And I wish I had a backup of this because this is definitely my most used. You can see that beautiful pearl finish. And this is a really beautiful uh, taupey brown that leans more brown than, than gray, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful shade. We also have the Burgundy Perlet, which is shade 38. Also limited edition came out with the same collection. I feel like you don't notice a pearl finish on this as much. This is going to be a true burgundy shade. And then this one here is Contour Brun 34. I think this is a permanent one as well. I'm not positive on that though, um, but this is one of my most used. You can see this is a really beautiful, a bit of a, a deeper brown. I use this for a smushed out eyeliner a lot and it's pretty neutral, leans slightly cool, but it's a really nice product. So these again, retail for $34. They are an all-in-one eye pen, according to Chanel, that can be used as long wearing shadow, liner, or coal for a variety of looks. I don't like to use these in my waterline. I don't feel like they really hold up super well there, but I will use these as shadow or liner. When I use these as liner, I really like them for the smudged out look. These are probably my favorite out of Chanel eyeliners. Um, 
I thought it was going to end up being Le Crayon Yos since those were previously my favorite, but it's the Stilo Ombre Contour because that creaminess really just feels a lot better gliding onto my lids. Moving on, we have the Stilo Yo Waterproof, and this comes in 14 shades. They were redone last year. They retail for $34. We do have a little sharpener at the end here, and it is a retractable product. I have all, I believe I have all 14. Well, I know I have all 14. I should have all 14 here. So according to Chanel, these are a versatile liner and coal pencil that defines eyes with an effortless twist of the wrist thanks to a retractable trip, uh, tip. They are waterproof and smudge proof. So you can smudge these out within the first few seconds, but then they do set. And I would have to say that is pretty accurate. Now for waterline rim use, I find that these perform better than Le Crayon Yo in the waterline. Um, so let's go ahead and start swatching. This one here is 10, a Ben. I'm gonna put this here since we're gonna compare all the blacks together. So these go on. I have to say some of the shades feel creamier than others. I think it probably has to do with the pigments involved, um, but that's that seems to be true with the Le Crayon Yo as well. Some feel creamier than others. We have 46, which is Vert Emerald. And I do have a video with these and some comparison. So I'll leave the link to that down below in the description box. 36 Prune Intense. You can see that this is going to be like a burgundy plum shade with a little bit more of that red, that plum red vibe to it. 38 Bleu Metal. This, I really love this shade. Um, I use this one quite a bit. And you can see that it's gonna be lighter and brighter than the blue jean in Le Crayon. 943 Brunt Agape. I'm just gonna put this up here with these other browns so you can kind of see how that compares. This is one of my most used shades as well. It has a little bit of shimmer and that's gonna be closest to the brown Cuivre. But you can see that this has a little bit more of a golden tone whereas the Brunagape has a little bit more red in there. This one here is 30 Marine. Let's put that right here with this blue. And here's Marine. That's gonna be a little bit closer to blue jean, but you can see that we've got more teal in here. There's a little bit more green to it. It's definitely blue. It doesn't look like a blue-green shade per se, but there's more green in it than blue jean and it's a really beautiful blue shade. If you want something that's a little different but not really out there, that's a really great one to, to have in my opinion. We also have 56 Khaki, Met, uh, Khaki Metal. This is actually the older formula and this was a limited edition shade. I really like this one. You've got a little bit of shimmer in here as well. You know what? I misspoke. The khaki metal, that is one of the new ones. There was a limited edition one that was khaki intense. Uh, so that, that's a little different than this. So this is khaki metal, new formula. Here we have 42 Gris Graphite, which I use a ton. And let's put that near the Gris Saint-Talant. And you can see this one's going to be a bit more silver. It has a lot more shimmer. Whereas this has a little bit more graphite actually in it, a little bit more steel gray, but you can see that they are still fairly similar. 48 or antique. And let's just put that here. I love this one for just a little bit of brightening. This one is great on the inner rim. Um, it's also great just to give a little bit of a different look on the upper lash line. You know, I like to do something like a black base perhaps and then put a little bit of this on top of it, like right on the edge, so you can see a little bit of both. We also have 20 Espresso. This is one of my most used shades, and let's put that here. You can see that this brown here is gonna be a little bit deeper than the other ones. And let me just double check, I think that was Bruntique. Yeah, so that was Bruntique. So that's gonna be the closest, but you can see Bruntique is slightly cooler in tone. There are a little bit more golden tones in the espresso. 54, Rose Cuivre. Really pretty, kind of like a metallic tea rose. 
Here's the limited edition one. This is 951 khaki intense. So this is the old formula. I'll just show you this difference here. And you can see that this has a little bit more gray in it than the new khaki metal. And it's also not so shimmery. Here's 88 noir intense. So you can see the difference between the blacks. Noir Intense is actually more of a true black, whereas Ebony or Eben um, has a little bit more blue in it. So it really depends which one you, you like, but there are a couple different blacks. We also have 83 Cassis, which is a really pretty, more blue-based purple, um, but it's not too blue. It's really more like a deep grape. This is 928 Eros. And you can see this one's super creamy. It's going to be deeper than the Rose Cuivre. You have a little sheen of a metallic finish on this as well. And it's more of a more of a medium rose. Moving on to the liquid eyeliners, these are called Liline. There are five shades, and the majority of these shades, the colored ones, are considered limited edition, yet they've been around for, I think, about three years or so now. They're 35 US dollars, and these do have a felt tip. So I always, you know, start to, I usually end up pulling this part off first and have it upside down, but uh, the long part is your handle. This one here is actually my favorite. This is number 526. Forget what it's called, but this is the blue one. So let me just show you this. And let me show you how fine of a line you can get with this. So, uh, you know, I, I actually really like these liquid eyeliners. I don't think they are the best formula for liquid eyeliners. For that, I personally prefer the Suku, the Yuzi, I think those are really great. I really like the new Dior as well. Um, this shade here though, I feel special. If you're trying to, to get one, I think this is worth getting. But these go on very nicely. And I have to say, I do really like these. So I would purchase these again. This one here is 524. And I love this shade. Look at that beautiful silver. And you can see, let me just put this with these grays here. So you can kind of see. Let's put it right here as well. It's going to be closest to the Gris Graphite from the Cielo Yo. 516, this is one of my most used shades from them. I just really love this shade. And it's more red than purple. Let me just put a little bit of it right here with these so you can kind of see how these go. Okay, and yeah, so this is the Prune Intense, which is gonna be the closest. And I think that's actually the Rouge Noir one. And this here is Mauve Maytel. And you can see that this is going to be a purpley shade here. And it's really pretty. It does not really go with any of the other liners that they have. So we've got Rouge Noir, Mauve Maytel, and then the last one here is the Brown 522. There is actually a black one as well, which I don't have. This is just a really nice everyday brown. Let me put that over here with these other browns. And I think the closest shade is the Brown Cuivre in the uh, Le Crayon Yo. So these liquid eyeliners, you put them on, they dry, they stay um, smudge proof. These are supposed to be water resistant and they also have uh, latex in the formula. So if you do have a latex allergy, just take, take that into account. Um, these do have latex in the formula. I think that they are a very nice liner though. So overall summation of all of the Chanel liners my favorite are still going to be the Cielo ombre contour because they do feel the creamiest going on and i have to say some of these feel creamier and swatching than they do when you put them on the eye so just take that into account if you go to the store to swatch any of these some of them do feel smoother going on 
So if we're going on a scale of creaminess, I would say the Cielo Ombre Contour followed by the Le Crancol, followed by Le Crania, then the Stilo Yo Waterproof, and obviously the Liline is liquid, so we'll keep that out of there. But uh, for performance wise, I think performance wise, we probably have the Stilo Yo are gonna be your most universal. They're probably gonna work the best for the majority of uses that people have. However, if you're somebody like me who really likes to smudge out your eyeliners and you don't really need precision as much, then you're probably going to enjoy some of the other formulas. Overall, I would have to say that I like these liners. I like all of the liners. However, I don't love them as much as I expected to or as much as I did in the past. For these creamier Le Crain Yeux and Le Crain Cole pencils, I do really like them. I really like the um, Brightening Claire shade. I think this is a really great shade. It's not too bright, but it definitely works. It kind of blends in with your skin a little bit or my skin tone a little bit. So it's not, not as evident that I have a product there, but it does have that brightening effect. So I really like that product a lot. I really, you know, in general, I think they've got great colors here. As for performance and price point, I think I still prefer the Lafito Coal Star from Sisley, which are these here. So these, however, are basically like twice the price. This one here is number five, Peacock. They go on creamy, they smudge out, and then they set. I just find that performance is a lot better with these than the Chanel. However, again, they're like twice the price. So you kind of have to decide what you're going for and, you know, it's a personal decision. So that's where I stand on all of these. I hope the swatches on these were helpful and let me know what you think. If you've tried these, if you've noticed any difference between the previous version and this newer version. I would love to hear from you. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day.